G'day folks, welcome to another episode of my 4x4. Uh, today, standing in front of a, uh, a, a bit of a truck here that you may recognise it uh, for all of you that are subscribers to our channel. Uh, James, would you like to come in and tell us about your vehicle, mate? First of all, and thank you very much for coming out today and no going to show us around. So, uh, what is it? Tell us. It's a 2000 Nissan Patrol GU, 4.5 litre, fuel injected. 4.5 litre petrol, yeah? Yep. Okay, so the girl would enjoy a drink. <laughs> <I'll be right. laughs> okay, so look, she's a big old rig. Um, what I'll get you to do is, uh, is show the folks around. We'll start at the front here, do the, the normal bits and pieces. Start at the front of the car, it's always a good place to start. So uh, just uh, tell us, what about your bull bar? It's just the standard Nissan Patrol GQ, GU factory bull bar. Yep. Uh, with the winch mount in the front of it. Um, have the King's 9 inch spotties on it and the King's Dominator X 1200 pound winch mounted in the front of it. Uh, 12,000 pound. 12,000 pound. 1200 pound isn't going to pull this old girl out of any trouble. But yeah, no, okay, we get that. Um, yeah, okie doke. So, standard factory bull bar. Yep. Right. Um, seems fairly solid. So it's, it's mounted straight into the chassis. Yeah, okie doke. Uh, it's fairly. I haven't had any problem with thick. it moving or anything. Yeah. I've used the winch a couple of times. Yep, no problems whatsoever. It doesn't move an inch. Yep, no dramas. And these, uh, the, the King's lights, okay, so we've gone down the budget track on the lights. How do you find them? I haven't really used them much, but from when I set them up and having them light up streets on the way home from work, it's quite good. Yep, okay, okay. So, yeah, on, on there, but you, you haven't used them really in anger at this point. No. Alrighty. So, lights, Dominator X, four and a half dB? Nah, 6.1 actually. 6.1? Yeah, because I've also got the extra mount so I can take the long area off and put the stubby oh, put, area put on. Put stubby on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, unit in, because I've got the unit in radio inside. Yep. So I thought I'll keep it all unit in. Yep, no problems. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat with that once we get into the uh, in, internal with the comms and we'll, we'll go through a couple of bits and pieces. I notice here the... Uh, that's hot. Wrap? Mainly went with the wrap because the bonnet was faded. Yeah. And then I also found out that if you're going to put a light bar up on underneath your roof rack, you can't have a gloss bonnet. Yeah. So I went with the matte Okay, so it get, gets, a little, gets a little bit bright. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're not allowed to have anything reflecting. Yeah. Yeah, well. So we, we, we won't go down the, uh, the, the track of legalities and so forth and so on. That's everyone's individual choice. Uh, we'll just step through the mods that you've actually got on <laughs> yeah. it. Um, yeah, look, that's no problems at all. Just looking from the front before we make any move, um, I see you've got a fair bit of stuff sort of happening on the, the go-arounds. And uh, I'm just trying to have a look. I think what we might do at this point in time is take a walk to that side of the vehicle. Um, we'll have a look at what's going on up on the roof and we'll have a chat about your tyres and suspension. Yep. Okay, doke. We've moved around to the side of your vehicle. What we will start on here, um, tyres and rims. You've got the Sunrager D-slot, steel rims. Yep. 17.9, or 17 inch with 9 inch wide. Yep. With 285s. Yep, okay. Falconers on them. So we're just a little bit of offset on those by the looks? Yeah, um, minus 10 offset. Minus just 10, to, yep. Just okay. to take okay. So just, just gives that, that little bit there. Um, so, wild peaks, what do you think of them, real quick? I quite like them actually. Yeah. Uh, they're not too noisy. Lots of grip wherever I go. And they've even performed well on the beach. Yep, yeah, no, that's good. And suspension? I have upgraded it to a two inch lift with um, West, West Australian suspension springs and Dobson shocks. Okie dokie, and that, uh, that does a trick for you with the big heavy girl? Yes, I've got extra heavy duty front and back. Okay, no problems whatsoever. No problems. And again, we'll just we, we kind of work our way backwards down the car. We made mention of the light bar up under your rack, uh, just for the, the folks at home. And god damn, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> just for the folks at home. Um, size and make? Uh, 42 inch Kings slimline. Okay, so it's a, a budget option. And yep. again, you probably wouldn't have used that in anger a lot, but enough to know that you. You needed some wrap on your bonnet, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no problemo. Okay, so we'll just move down just marginally. Um, I see you're running just still 
like the factory side steps haven't got uh, sliders on it. I'm waiting till I destroy them before I pull them off, and then I'll end up getting um, locker bars on them. Okay, okay. so you wait, waiting to damage those enough so you can put some uh, put some rock bars on <laughs> and away you go. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. It's all good for the budget mods. Um, alrighty. Sexy. Rhino Batwing. Uh, originally had the King's awning up there. Yeah. Not big enough. So I went with the 270 degree Batwing. Okay, 270. And just really quickly on that, do you have much trouble setting that up by yourself? Do you own it? How does None it cope with the wind? Don't have any trouble whatsoever. It's got that many anchor points. You can peg it down really easy. Yeah, okay. And so so the, easy, easy to put up by yourself, easy to yep. put back away and it, it stands up for wind okay. Yeah, yep. really well. Not a problem whatsoever. Alrighty, so on the move down, there's one thing that I do notice that you have on this old girl here. It's a very cheap mod, and I think they're a really, really, really good thing, but that's my personal opinion. The sun rises. Yeah. I don't like driving with the windows up. Yeah. So, and I'm a smoker, so I always have the sun visors on all my cars. Yeah. Okay. And just really briefly, like you get those there and they do seem quite flimsy. But they don't t don't make much of a noise of that while you're driving. They, while I'm driving, they don't move around at all. Yeah. Okay. They, so the, the wind sit. kind of sets them in. Yeah. Holds them right in. Yep. Not a problem whatsoever. Um, okay. So the folks at home probably aren't going to get too good an angle on this from here, but I'm sure we'll get some closer shots of it. Um, what sort of rack are you running? It's the ARB um, full full length cut them out. Okay. Cut them out. Um, Is it a flat rack? No. No, it's not. Okay. It's not flat right. No problem. It's got the third side. Yeah. One yep. third. Yep. It's just at the front. It's got the little sides. Yep. Um, it looks relatively sturdy. Do you use your rack much? Um, I used to. I used to have a rooftop tent up there. Yeah. But I found with my lift and um, trying to get in and out of it with my sides, and I went with a different, different option. Yep. Okay. So. Rooftop tent up there, found out that that wasn't necessarily the best way to go for you, so away with the rooftop tent and change setup. Yeah. And I also found that the fuel economy was a bit better with that up there. Uh, yeah, well, it, absolutely. Anything that you put on your roof is not helping your aerodynamics at all, and I mean, let's face it, four wheel drive's not the most aerodynamic thing on the planet. Um, okay, so that pretty much takes us away from what we've got happening at this side. So we might shoot to the other side of your vehicle, um, have a look at what we've got going on over there, and then we'll move around to the back. Okay, doke. So now we're on this side. Um, we'll just sort of catch up on, on bits and pieces. First thing I noticed when I walked around here, and I wasn't really looking before, but I have now. Old school manual locking hubs. Okay. Tell the viewers, because a lot of them will be of the younger ilk that have never seen manual locking hubs before. How many times have we selected four-wheel drives and neglected to lock the hubs in? A couple so far. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll leave it at a couple because us old bulls, we do it all the time. Okay, so anyway, look, moving down to the side of the vehicle here, I notice steel snorkel. Stainless steel snorkel. Yeah. Safety measure, just in case I come across a, something a bit too deep. Uh, okay, so purely for, for water crossings and yep. so forth. And uh, stainless steel, but you've sprayed that with um, spray plate. vinyl. Spray vinyl. Looks all right. Looks all right. Um, all right, so I'll just I'll, I'll pop you as much out of the sun as I possibly can. Um, we get a, a bit of a closer look at your rack up here, and what well, the ARB rack that we can see, and you've got um, a bracket on there, obviously with a shovel sticking on it, and some other bits and pieces. You want to talk us through what you use that for? Solely for holding the shovel. I. It is also a um, high lift jack as well holder. It was on the roof rack when I got it, but I don't have a high lift jack yeah. so uh, I don't worry about it. Yeah okay so yeah it's you can put a high lift jack on that but you choose not to uh, not no. to use a high lift jack and, and I can't blame you for that they, uh, they they can be an interesting piece of kit to say the very least and particularly dangerous in some applications so um all right so that that's just your, your normal shovel you it looks a little bit rudimentary on the bits and pieces but solid as I rock so it doesn't move doesn't vibrate doesn't make any sound Oh, it doesn't make a sound. No. I've got to get me one of those. By Christ, mine does. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, look, it, it's been a little bit on the 
flick down through, but I think where we really need to go now is at the back, we'll have a look at your, your rear setup, uh, and then we'll have a look at, uh, at what you've got going on inside. All right, so here we are at the back of the vehicle, um, and normally we start at the bottom and work up, but let's change it up a little bit. We'll start at the top and work down. Um, again, up with the roof rack part thing there, I can see what looks like a solar panel, fairly confident that it is, and some yep. lights. Do you want to talk us through? As the King's 160 watt solar panel. Yeah. Um, I decided to go with a fixed one because I purely couldn't be bothered putting the, the fold the, up the, one out. The, the, the lazy man's one, put it up there, set it, forget it, move on. Yeah. yeah. And the lights are just the King's camp lights. I use them as reverse lights. Yeah, okay. That's what they'll cure the there for, yes. just reverse lights. Yeah, no problems. And they work all right? Very well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, again, and, and we'll discuss the difference um, with budget options and the extravagant costs and so forth and so forth later. Um, but your solar panel, work okay by you? So far, it has. It's only been up there for a few weeks and I haven't had any dramas with it so far. No problems. That's a good, good thing. All right, I see. Jerry can for when a couple of hundred litres is not enough in the GU petrol. <laughs> no, sorry, just just kidding, just kidding. You want to talk us through your rear bus? Um, I'll, I'll start a little story. I went out on a um, trip to the power lines yeah. and totaled my rear bumper. I see. Lights fell out and everything. Yeah, it's so, a GU, that happens, yeah. So, good excuse to upgrade the back bumper. Perfect excuse. Went with the MSA, what, M MCC? Yeah. Steel um, reinforced bumper. And the swing outs, uh, spare wheel and single jerry can. Single jerry can. Which, is, once I do get my new tank, that'll be a water holder. <laughs> it's a trailer, a trailer with a fuel. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. If you own a patrol, guys, you know you got to you got to have the jacks. It's all all better, but um, yeah, truth be known, they're very capable. But never mind. Okay, so we've only got a single tire carrier on the back, which is fair enough. Um, Jerry can. Let's open the girl up and have a look and see what's going on inside. All right, um, it's as big as my ass. Um, okay, I'll leave you to it, mate. Talk, talk us through and the uh, the folks at home through what you've got going on in the back here. Right, I'll start off. I've got the Emulex twin sliding drawers, so I can install my uh, recovery gear and some camping equipment. Yep. Then I have the preview Easy Slide drop down quick slide. Yep. And I also have a 75 litre King's Fridge dual zone. 75 litres. Yep. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that's a big ass fridge for one guy. <laughs> that it is, but I have that size fridge so that I can go away camping for about a week. Yep. Okay. No, no, no. Fair call. I mean, horses for causes. I'm just a little bit jealous because I couldn't fit that in my car, but that's by the by. Um, no, look, it's a, a really, really clean setup. I'll just ask a couple of quick questions. If you just want to grab one of those drawers, open it, slide it out, because I'm seeing a couple of aftermarket lock things happening in here. This, uh, this, this one's actually the top of it's a fridge slide. Yep. But I don't use it at all. Yep. So that came with the lock on it. So because I've got the bigger fridge slide, it is, um, yep. eradicates yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I do need to get um, some locks. The drawers do rattle. They just yeah, okay. they all that. so they're fairly robust. Yeah, yeah they're robust, but yeah. when you're driving along, they do rattle. You get used to that. Just watch fingers. No, that's uh, that, that's quite good. And pop your fridge. Pop my fridge. And the only reason I'm saying that is I'm looking at a door here, and that's looking really close. Ah, yes, it's really close. <laughs> that's really really close.
Nice. And you measured that yourself? Uh, by eye. By, by eye. You got, either you got real lucky or you got a wicked eye because that just touches. But no, that, that's really close. That's actually not too bad whatsoever now that you've dropped it down. It's at a decent height. Yeah. So if it was a, a non-drop down one, you could forget that. Originally, I did have a normal fridge slide in there. Yeah. And I was having to stand on the bumper to be able to get into the fridge. Yeah, and I've been your your no shrinking violet either. So so if you're the if you're the average six foot guy, you you'd be no chance. You couldn't get to the last cans on the bottom. <laughs> well, that could be devastating. That could be devastating. No problems. Okay, look, let's leave that out like this. Um, we'll get the camera in. We'll have a little quick shine around in the back as to uh, to what you've got going on. Then we might jump in the old girl and uh, and have a look at the business department. Alrighty, well here we are inside the office, um, okay, first thing I notice, fridge? The Dominic C11 console fridge, decided to pull out the console and put a fridge in there because I couldn't be bothered getting out to get to the fridge in the back. Yeah, no, that's fair enough, one thing I notice about, or the first thing I notice about this, we're both obviously big guys, you're not quite so big as me, but you know, we get that, but that's at, actually at a really comfortable height sitting in your in your chair so did research them online a fair bit before i went out and got one yeah very good um okie doke down yonder let's start here and work our way across so what do we got going on here that's a navman a Nav navara um light socket um, for USBs, okay, so charging. just just char charging basically. Yeah. Siggy lighter, Siggy lighter. Just took the cigarette USBs. lighter from underneath to over there. Oh, okay, so so yeah. the yep, no problem. Oh, so you've just got it plugged in on an extension that's yep. over here out the road. Because again, essentially, you travel by yourself a lot, so you you haven't got a lot of people sitting in the passenger seat. So that's not too bad at all. And really, it's not that much in your way at no. all. I mean, I'm sitting here quite comfortably and no dramas whatsoever. Um, okay, phone. Holder, uh, wireless charger and phone holder. Wireless charger and have, have you? Is that how you bought it, or did you make that little mod yourself where you've got it, it screwed in? It was a windscreen mount. Yep. But it bounced up and down quite a lot yep. on the windscreen, so I pulled it apart halfway and screwed it straight to the dash. Yep. Okay. So you've you've made your own you've made your own mod, but uh, you know that looks fairly robust down there, uh, and you purely use that for your phone. Yep. Okay. Because we have our. Uh, we have our navigations up the top up there. Which is the HEMA um, HX1. That's HX1? Yep. Um, got sick of the phone dropping out, decided no, I'll go with the HEMA so I yep. can map some tracks and yep. everything like that. So, and a dumb question, but I know you'll answer honestly. What do you think of the HEMA? It doesn't handle the heat too well. Yep. Um, if you leave it out on the dash too long, it'll just freeze and you have to pull it down and yep. let it cool down before you can start using it again okay, but other than that maps and everything else is brilliant okay but if you're driving along with the aircon happening and you just sort of had the aircon up there yeah. that'll keep it cool while you're on a drive you just can't leave it out permanent yeah no problems okay um air comms uh unit n compact so that it didn't take up too much room yep. uh, 80 channel yep okay and the, and the mi microphone is just the, the very basic one. Yeah. Standard handpiece. Yep, no problems. And it obviously does the job. You've been out to, been out with us and we've had no problems at all hearing you at all. Um, okay, moving across. Something that can't go unsaid, mate. Now, I, hang on. Be before you say anything, we have a tendency on this channel to shall we say take some liberties with seriousness you're not necessarily the youngest bloke on the planet but we have skull gear caps what's going on here mate an old bogan from heart <laughs> an old bogan <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> and you I'll, I'll let the viewers in on a little secret. He was telling me that the eyes used to glow, but uh, the batteries aren't working, so we can't show you the eyes glowing at the minute. But uh, yeah, no, it's... Back in the era where I grew up, it was eight balls, skull caps, and black widow spiders. 
as gear knobs. Okay, so we've gone with the skull. Yep. Uh, each to their own, I say. <laughs> each to their own. Um, all right. So just quickly on the on the move through, I'm not really au okay fait with what's standard equipment and what's not on the GUs. Um, so if you just want to talk us through any of the other mods that you happen to have made, or what sort of even the standard equipment that you've got there, if it's got lockers or so forth and so on. Um, I've pulled out the head unit and put in a different head unit for the stereo. Yeah, it okay. also has the um, brake assist for towing. Oh, okay, so you which put, is put down here. Yep. Um, what so um, is that? Red oak. Um, don't know. Oh, it's not. It's a. Oh, oh to Hay yeah, Hay or Hay Hayman Reese. I'm assuming that would be the brand. Yeah. So, but uh, you do a bit of towing in this, girl then. Um, it was actually in it when I bought it. So, okay, I so pre previous owner previous quite possibly owner. did some towing in it. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I didn't think I'd ever seen you to towing anything in this, but at least it's nice to know it's there if you need it. Yes. Yep, okay. Do. And I have all my switches for my spotties here, and the back lights, which you saw on the roof rack, yeah. also have a switch there, so I can switch them on without having to put it in reverse. Yep. Not okay, so they a set up on your reverse but you can also yep. turn them on independently turn them off independently yes which is more important for any police officers out there <laughs> that makes them legal yeah <laughs> good there camp lights they're not reverse lights um okay that actually that's a pretty funky steering wheel did that is that just your standard gu it's a standard gu all the leather started peeling off yeah so i just got a steering wheel cover just cover over it no problems yeah. okay and yeah everything else there is standard across All the board standard, um, it's got the cruise control on the steering wheel so everything was standard on it yep no props and mm -hmm. just one quick question while we're sitting in here um, we've had a, a quick look in the back there I see you've got a travel buddy set up over that side and we'll, we'll show the viewers at home sort of we'll in insert some footage of that um, just a, a real quick question on your travel buddy it's Does, not a travel buddy. It's not, okay. It's a cheap version. It, it's a cheap version. <laughs> we can discuss that at a later point in time. But essentially, it's an in-car oven. Does that drive you insane when you're cooking something inside the car? Yes. <laughs> totally <laughs> not. You, you get to the point where you think, oh, it could be cooked by now. And you can smell it. And it's just, want to pull over, have it. Right there and then. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hearing you. See, that, that's the only downside. I'm really jealous because I um, I don't have one in my vehicle. Other members of the crew <laughs> both have one, and it would drive me insane because I'm the type of person when I get hungry, as you probably notice, when I get hungry, it's like I need to eat now. And if I had stuff warming up in that and it started to smell, man, we would be making, it would take us forever to get anywhere. <laughs> of course, I'd be having three lunch breaks. <laughs> That's why I've got it behind the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> or behind the seat, so yeah, I don't can, have to go too far to yeah, get to it. So you can quite possibly reach that on the fly. Um, okay, look, anyway, uh, long story short, what we might do now is we've had a little bit of a look around. We've had opportunity to show the folks at home what you've got set up. We might grab ourselves a chair and find a, a cooler spot to sit and have a little bit of a chat about the vehicle. Yep. Alrighty, well this is much more pleasant out with a, a little bit of a breeze blowing now. Um, Okay, a couple of things that we haven't discussed at this point in time, like we've seen your fridge, we've seen all your setup inside. What's your 12 volt setup? At the, at the moment, it's two 96 amp hour deep cell batteries. Yep. With a um, CTEC DC to DC charger. So I can run from the alternator and the solar panel. Yep, okay, so the yeah, CTEC. CTEC, uh, 250 SE. No problem. So, uh, and you find that works quite well for you? At the moment, yes, but we'll be upgrading the batteries. Yep, no problems. And just a quick question on the batteries, like you've got two, in round figures, you've got 200 amp hour batteries in there. Um, all that we're really looking at at this point in time is your fridge and your, your oven and stuff. What made you choose to go the, the, the two batteries rather than just the one? Um, being off the grid camping and running everything at the same time, yeah. not having to have the stress of I'm going to run out of power. Yep. Okay. So you you, you do take the, uh, the the big bus here out and go for a number of days at a time, not necessarily moving around too much of the daytime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that that makes sense. And the the reason that I say that our um, 
our walk arounds are more targeted at the average man's, average Joe's four, four by four. You know, we're, we're not doing walk arounds of $100,000 rigs and so forth. So I just wanted to put that question there for the viewers of our channel can have a look and work out why are you running two 100 amp hour batteries rather than a majority of people just running one. And that's simply because that suits your setup and your purpose for what you use your vehicle for. I just want to go to a destination and camp. Yep. Don't want to have to go tracks and all over the place. Yeah, okay. So yeah, when, when you pull up, you could be at the same destination or the, or the same site for multiple days rather than just pull in, spend a couple of hours, pack up the next morning, shoot through and away you go again. Yep. Exactly. Yep, no, and that's that's perfectly fine. Um, okay, so just a couple of questions, and I always throw this in particular, and it, it's not pointed at the patrol, right? I always ask the question, fuel economy. I have actually got an app on my phone, and I have monitored it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm roughly at a 13 litres per 100 kilometres. Your app's broken. <laughs> I, I'll just say that straight up. Your app's broken or you're measuring it downhill on the freeway with no stopping. At 13 litres per 100 kilometres in the big old GU with the petrol motor, <laughs> your app's broken. But that is driving it like a granny. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Ruth, truth be told, if you drive it easy, the fuel economy is not horrible. Yeah. Um, having said that, but looking at the old girl, she, what, what's it come in at? Three tonne, 3.1, 3.2? Closer to four. Closer to four? Yeah. Your app's broken. <laughs> okay, through all of this here, and for all of the viewers that aren't aware, we've been reasonably good mates for a while now, and it's always been the, I've taken my car to the King Super Centre, I've put the catalogue on the counter and said I'll have one of those. <laughs> right, but in, in all honesty, a lot of the mods that you've got there, and we won't go down the track of, you know, like King C-Tech, all the different brands. A majority of the mods that you've made to this vehicle are budget mods. There are a couple of mods that I see on this vehicle that you haven't scrimped on, uh, which in my opinion are the important ones. CG, your bull bar, your suspension, your tyres, they're, like they're far from the budget brands. So do you regret going down that budget track to try and save a quid? No, not at all. I went the budget track to start with to get to the point so that it was set up, ready to go. Yeah. And then worked out that later on down the track, I can upgrade. Yep, yeah, no, and that, yeah. that, that's a fair call. Basically, it was to get me on the road. Yep, okay, so. what I needed. Yeah, so basically, what you're saying is that you knew there were things that you needed, you bought budget where possible, and then as you become a little bit more financial and work out if they suit your need or if they don't suit your need, then you upgrade and you upgrade with a, a little bit higher quality. Yeah. So, and let, let's be fair here, let's back up. I said I wouldn't name brands. Everyone, and I mean everyone says, King stuff is cheap, it's not reliable. Well, most everyone. Has anything from King's that you've bought let you down? Only the rooftop tent. Only the rooftop tent. And that was the zipper on the rooftop tent. Yeah, okay. So that was far and from a game. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a showstopper. No. Yeah. Um, and to me, I think that's exactly their place in the market. People that don't have a lot of finances behind them can go out and they can buy budget options that, as long as it's not critical componentry, will do the job for you. Um, and I mean, I've, I've got a, a chunk of King stuff on my car as well, not touch wood, not once has it let me down. So um, anyway, whilst we're on that subject, what's the next upgrade in the old girl? Uh, fuel tanks. <laughs> that, that was quick. <laughs> that, that for, was... Hang on. For a guy who tracks his fuel economy that's getting, let we say, spectacular <laughs> results. <laughs> Your next mod is fuel tanks. I want to be able to travel further on cheaper fuel. <laughs> on cheaper fuel? Yeah, yeah. If you can find cheaper fuel, can you let me know? Um, yeah, okay, so what size tanks have got in at the minute? At the moment, I have a 110 litre main tank. Yeah. And also a 40 litre sub tank, which doesn't work. Yeah, okay, so at this point in time, you've 
basically got access to 110 litres of fuel on board. Yep. Right, and you're looking at upgrading the tanks to go to. I've already paid and ordered and bought them. Okay, just so waiting for them to arrive. I've got a 148 litre main tank and an 80 litre sub tank. Okie dokie, so, so 200, 230. 220 litres. Do you want to do your math? 228 <laughs> litres. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say 230. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it's all good. So that will actually significantly improve your range. Yep. Um, so you've got those on order, and I'm assuming that could be here tomorrow, it could be here in three months' time. The whole, uh, the whole getting parts through COVID thing is a, a, a little bit how long's a piece of string. Yeah, um, originally they were meant to be here on the 13th of December. Well, actually, that's not too bad. We're not that late. Yeah. We're not that late. Um, okay, so fuel tanks aside, any any further mods that you've got in mind that you're looking at doing? At this stage, mainly just the fuel tanks. Maybe later on down the track, upgrading the roof rate to a newer roof rate. Yeah. Because it's getting a bit long in the tooth. Yep, no, fair enough. So, but you're, you're reasonably happy with what you've done. I will be changing the rims out because my rims are getting to the point where they need replacing. Yep, fair enough. Because one that's sitting behind my head here is rather badly buckled. <laughs> no problems. Okay, well, we don't want buckle stuff. Um, alrighty, well, look, look, I really do thank you for coming out today. Um, it's been quite a warm morning and it's been challenging to say the least. It's uh, beautifully still at the crack of dawn this morning and it's not quite so still now but uh, the, the bonus of that is it's cooling it down a little bit so look thank you very much for bringing your rig out to show us i hope everyone that has a look at this enjoys the walk around of the old gu i will say one thing straight up we poke fun at the datsun the old dado here but the old girl's pretty bloody capable as, as it stands like uh, you know it, it's a big heavy rig doesn't go anywhere fast does go pretty much anywhere um but anyway like in closing again thank you very much james appreciate the fact that you went out of your way to bring it out here to uh, to let us to have a, a, a look around at it and show the folks at home right. and we look forward to uh, you joining us on a trip in the not too far distant future and we also look forward to you guys joining us on the next episode thank you very much guys